Hello, I'm Mark Lowerty. If you're one of the thousands of shareholders attending the annual general meeting of Capital Land on the 25th of April, I'm certain you would have read this by now, right? The annual report. Well, in case you haven't thumbed through all 272 pages, James Lung is here with us to help you through it. He's the chief executive of Vision One Consulting and also the uh, creator of the Interpreting Annual Reports for Stock Selection course that's offered by the Securities Investors Association of Singapore. And uh, James, you've had a look through this annual report. Um, yes, Mark. Walk us through, I guess, not so much the individual sections, but tell us first about the performance of Capital Land. How can retail investors really get their heads around how the company performed? Very good. Uh, the first question to ask with regards to performance and where you get the answer from is to take a look at the income statement. Right. So let's take a look at the income statement of Capital Land. And there are three zones that we are really looking out at, uh, one of which is the revenue zone, as you can see. Mm -hmm. You've highlighted that in red. That's correct. Okay. And the next number we want to uh, calculate is called the EBIT, which is the earnings before interest and tax. So essentially, as you can see, you take the profit before taxation and you add back the finance cost. Right. And, and you've the, highlighted that. That's the first line in yellow that you've got there. Precisely. Right. And I'll tell you the reason why we are looking at EBIT as well uh -huh. later. And the third number that you need is profit that's attributable to the owners of the company. In short, it's called PETME, which stands for Profit After Tax and Minority Interest. Right. Okay. Good. And that's, uh, again, you've uh, kindly highlighted that for us in red. So what, what do we do with this number? How, does, uh, how can we read performance out of this? Precisely. So let's begin with revenue. So take a look at this. What we want to do is to compare the performance of the company, compare that with the year before. Mm -hmm. And as you take a look at this chart, you will find that revenue has gone up 14.4%, EBIT has gone up 53.9%, and PETME has gone up 20.9%. Mm -hmm. so, so in other words, the, the revenue grew, obviously, yeah. But actually, the earnings before interest and tax grew substantially more. That's right. And the profit after tax and minority interests was uh, higher than the revenue growth, but not as high as EBIT. That's right. Confusing. Yeah. So let's go through the process right. to understand what goes on behind the numbers. Okay. So what we want to find out next is to, as investors, it's important to know where the sources of revenue are coming from. So if you go to note 26 from the annual report, you will find the breakdown of the revenue. Mm -hmm. And you can see substantially it comes from trading of properties, rental related income, uh, fee income, and service residence rental as well as related income. Right. And uh, what's really important to find out will be what happens to the income or the revenue that has changed from 0, 2009 to 2010. What are the reasons for the changes? Mm -hmm. Is that going to be the trend going forward? And if there's a dip, is that sustainable in terms of uh, recovering of revenue? So very, very important for sustainability of earnings. Yes, it's, it's all well and good to have these revenues one year, but the uh, question is whether they'll re be recurring. Precisely. Right. So a very important information for us to look at, and this is where we can take a look at Capital Land's full year unaudited financial statements announcement, which is really the equivalent of the MDNA management discussion and analysis. Very, very useful document to have in front of you while you go through the annual report. Okay, so the unaudited financial statements announcement, right. That's correct. So if you take a look at this, and it tells you that for the full year, revenue went up 14.4%, which was the number that we saw earlier on, and it tells you where the growth is coming from, achieving that from Singapore, Australia, and Vietnam, so you mm. know the sources of revenue growth. Right. At the same time, if you were to go down and read the rest of the information, one of the things that you have picked up as well will be that renter income has saw a decrease. In this case, why was that? Because following the divestment of the 28 service residences to Escort REIT last year. Mm -hmm. So the question here is that, is that going to be replenished in terms of the revenue stream? Very important to shareholders. Yes. And the answer can be found on the next slide. Right. And that came from management's briefing to analysts. Right, and, and it says there in very big letters, executing the strategy. Precisely, and it says building a Scots glo global dominance and they're going to deploy $1 billion of capital into new investments and regrow the portfolio. Mm -hmm. So th that provides the assurance to shareholders that whatever has been sold off will be replenished. Right, Yeah. got it. Good, and uh, so are we done with performance or is there more to add on the, the performance part of the discussion? Uh, yes, there's more to the performance, two more areas in fact. So we've covered revenue, which is the top line. Next, what's important is not just what you collect or receive as revenue, but how much you get out from your revenue in terms of profit. That's right. So that's where we look at the second zone, which is EBIT. So 
earnings before interest and tax. It's gone up 53.9%. Mm -hmm. uh, why are we looking at EBIT? Because if you take a look at the end report in the segment information, management uses EBIT to measure performance to manage their business operation units, SBUs they call it. Mm -hmm. So it is with that in mind that we will be understanding how EBIT performance, uh, how EBIT perform across the different uh, business units across different geographical sectors as well. Right. So take a look at note 41 of the annual report and you can see their operating segments. So there you have it, the $3.3 billion of revenue mm -hmm. that we saw. That's highlighted there in yellow. That's highlighted mm -hmm. there in yellow and you have the EBIT of $2.38 uh, billion. From here you can tell the different sectors or the different business units that comprise capital and businesses. So you can see it runs across the entire value chain and also at the same time, it demonstrates that Capital Land is indeed a multi-sector company. Next, very important information. So one part of looking at segment information is called operating segment. The other way is really look at the geographical information as in the country of operation mm -hmm. where the profits and the revenue are coming from. So from here, you could tell that from Singapore, 35%, meaning to say that 65% of the business came from overseas. Yes. So yes, international footprints across many parts of the world. Mm. Well, that, that, that speaks to Capital Land's uh, four-pronged strategy, right? Singapore, Precisely. China, Vietnam and Australia. Precisely. So what you can see is really what, uh, what Capital Land is all about is multi-sector, multi-geographical business yeah, across the whole value chain. So we talk about EBIT. Very important to know not just the revenue, the top line, but also how the profit has grown mm. over the years and what are the causes for it. So as you can take a look at this chart over here. EBIT by SBUs. SBUs must be strategic business units. Precisely, Mark. Right. That's correct. So you can see that um, the composition for the 53.9% increment over the year before, it brings down to the SBU unit what happened to Capital Land Residential Singapore, uh, Capital Land China Holdings and Escort, as well as uh, the other businesses. Right. So as investors, it's very important for us to know what are the causes for the changes. Yes. Uh, and to, to get a glimpse into all the reasons for the movement, again, going back to the unaudited financial statement announcement or the MDNA is going to be very, very useful because they provide explanatory information for mm -hmm. us to further understand the financial yes. information. Well, the, the numbers are one thing, but you have to know what they mean. Precisely. Right? So. Taking a look at Capital Land Residential Singapore, so it tells you, for example, turnover went up 25%, but why did EBIT drop 5.4%? It's very interesting to know, isn't it? It is, yes. Yes, and it, it tells you the answer over here, because what happened was that there was um, one an exceptional revaluation gain the year before, and ah. this year they didn't have it. Right. Yeah. However, after stripping out the revaluation, you find that the core EBIT, the core operations, actually went up by 17.1%. Mm -hmm. So that is actually good news. I see. So okay. despite what the numbers look like at the initial stage. So very, very important to look at the details to understand more of this information. Mm -hmm. And something interesting to highlight to you as well, uh, Mark, just now earlier on what you said was that turnover went up, but EBIT went up even more. Yes. So it sounds very interesting uh, on the surface. So what does that mean? So if you take a look at this, and you notice that in 2010, this is what they told you, that in China, the majority of the units sold during the year were from development projects held by associates, which Capital uh, Holdings China did not consolidate the revenue line. So what does that mean? Now, I have this, no idea. Yeah. Now this calls for a little bit of accounting, introduction to accounting. Right. Now if you take a look at Note number two from their accounting policies. This is what they say. Associates and joint ventures collectively refer to what's called equity accounted investees are accounted for using the equity method. And the consolidated financial statements include the group share of the profit or loss of the equity accounted investors. Quite a mouthful, isn't it? Mm. So what does that mean? That's the question I was That's about to ask That's the question. You. So what it means here is that if you have, so think about this, in a group structure, if you have subsidiaries, which means to say that Capital Land will be able to consolidate and add the revenue, the expenses, the cost, and to calculate the profit. But if you have what is called equity accounted investments, in this case, they accounted for the joint ventures mm -hmm. results using the equity accounting method, then you can't add the revenue, your share of the revenue, but you only add 